Dr. John Keswis, the president of the Round Table and Sustainable Palm Oil, Mr. Darrell Weber, the Secretary General of the Round Table and Sustainable Palm Oil, advisors, executive board members of the Round Table on Sustainable Palm Oil, Excellencies, distinguished guests, participants, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to take this opportunity to express my appreciation to the organizers of the ninth annual round table meeting on sustainable palm oil, RT9, for the invitation to officiate this event. I am also pleased to be here today with all of you, especially the growers, the processors, and the buyers. I believe that your presence here at this event signifies your continued support on the importance of sustainable palm oil production. I would also like to take this opportunity to extend a warm welcome and wish Selamat Datang to Malaysia, to all the delegates, especially from overseas. I wish you a very pleasant stay in this beautiful state of Sabah, Malaysia, commonly known as the land below the wind. Sabah is rich in flora and fauna, and more importantly, a lot of places for you to discover. That means you don't have to stay in KK all the time. The convening of RT9 and the overwhelming response to this event reflects the seriousness of all the stakeholders in the industry on the issue of sustainability. It is also heartening to know the cross-section of the participants present here today to deliberate on the approach towards sustainability. Ladies and gentlemen, the oil palm industry is an important pillar in the nation's economy. It is indeed the backbone of the country's agriculture sector and has contributed significantly towards the economic development, providing employment opportunity to Malaysians, raising the income level, and elevating poverty, particularly in the rural hinterland of the country. Currently, the total planted area is recorded at 4.8 million hectares, which is close to 70% of the total agricultural land utilization in Malaysia. The oil palm industry provides direct employment to more than 600,000 people, including 300,000 smallholders. The industry, on an average, contributes 3% annually to the gross domestic income and is one of the country's major socio-economic drivers. In the year 2010, total palm oil exports were recorded at 62.3% billion ringgit, and I have reasons to believe that it will exceed 70 billion ringgit for this year, by the end of this year. The development of the palm oil industry in Malaysia was given a new direction by being part of one of the drivers under the Economic Transformation Program, which is aimed towards making Malaysia a high-income country come the year 2020. The palm oil industry is envisaged to contribute towards generating a gross national income of 178 billion ringgit by the year 2020 through the implementation of eight projects covering both the upstream and downstream sectors. The government on this part will continue to identify enabling measures to further strengthen the role of this industry in the future. This is factoring the limited land available for future expansion and the need to move this industry up the value chain into production of more value-added products. In the context of enhancing productivity, Malaysia has invested in genome research to identify the genetic blueprint of the oil palm. This will provide a window to develop better quality planting materials that are disease-resistant and high-yielding fruits with better oil extraction rates. In the longer term, we hope to increase the national productivity to around six tons of crude palm oil per hectare, 
compared to the current national average of four tons of CPO per hectare. In addition, the government will continue to provide assistance to the smallholders to replant unproductive old palms. In the case of the downstream sector, the oil palm offers opportunities in a number of areas, which include the production of nutraceutical products and a source of second generation biofuel. In this context, Malaysia will continue to encourage the development of integrated facilities through the establishment of palm oil clusters. In Malaysia today, Malaysia will continue to undertake measures towards making the oil palm industry environmentally friendly by encouraging the industry to trap, maintain and research into the utilization of the palm biomass. I'm optimistic the aggregation of all these measures will further enhance the development of the Malaysian palm oil industry and without doubt boost the image of the palm oil produced by Malaysia. I would like to put on record that the Malaysian palm oil industry is rather independent and does not require much support from the government which would otherwise be distortive to the economy. This is indeed a manifestation that the palm oil industry in Malaysia is viable and sustainable. Ladies and gentlemen, the development of the oil palm industry has never been without challenges. Environmental and consumer advocacy groups, particularly in Europe and the US, have stepped up claims that the oil palm sector is destroying large tracts of forests and encroaching on the natural habitats of endangered species. For example, a report entitled The Last Stand of the Orangutan, State of Emergency, claims that oil palm plantations are expanding so rapidly in the rainforest of Malaysia that almost no virgin forest will remain by the year 2022. It has also been claimed that an equivalent of 300 soccer fields are deforested every hour for oil palm plantations. I am of the view that all these allegations are baseless and based on the premise of fear on the competitiveness of the oil palm industry. Malaysia's awareness and commitment towards environment can be traced back to as far as the introduction of the Taman Negara enactment in Kelantan and Terengganu in 1938 and followed by Pahang in 1939. In terms of wildlife conservation, Malaysia continues to preserve its natural habitat. For example, an area of 250 thousand hectares in the Ulu Segama Malua Sabah was designated as a forest reserve to protect orangutans. Efforts are being made to correct orangutans through wildlife corridors in and around the oil palm plantations. And I've read some of the reports in today's um, local papers about the difficulty of connecting the orangutans um, from um, various um, forests within plantations. And I think um, I take a very serious view of this, and I think um, perhaps the state government of Sabah, with our cooperation, can um, work together perhaps to acquire the lands that is required to connect all these um, wild wildlife um, jungles, uh, so that um, the corridors can be acquired by the government compulsorily. I have no um, um, hesitation in recommending that this be done, and I would like to say that 